Hi everybody, we're back today with another question regarding transaction analysis and how to prepare financial statements once we understand transaction analysis. The book we're using for this is Fundamentals, uh, sorry, Financial and Managerial Accounting by Kimmel, Weigand and Kieso. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can stay up to date with our accounting and finance um, posts. So. The question, uh, the chapter that we're looking at is chapter number one, and the question comes from problem set B, and this is problem 1-4B. So, Jesse Paulus started, concerting, started a consulting firm, Paulus Consulting, on May 1st, 2014. The, the following transactions occurred during the month of May. Now, what you can see in front of you is basically the format for a transactions table. And in this in this table, what we're going to do is we're going to go through each and every single transaction and try to identify which counts are increasing and which counts are decreasing. So for our first transaction, we're going to convert this into a date instead of serial number. Our first transaction occurs on the 1st of May. And uh, we see here we've got a series of data transactions. Our instructions indicate that in part A we have to show the effects of the previous transactions on the accounting equation using the following format. And that's the exact format that we've entered into our Excel file. And then we'll prepare an income statement and then we'll prepare a balance sheet. And of course the missing piece between part B and C is the statement of retained earnings, which we'll also do. So getting started on part A, we're going to look through each transaction one by one and see the impact that it has on our financials. So on the 1st of May, Paulus invested $8,000 cash in the business in exchange for stock. That means you've had an influx of cash, your cash count will increase by $8,000 and so will your common stock. And so it's affecting the accounting equation equally on both sides. On 2nd of May, we have paid $800 for office rent for the month. Now, because we've already paid it, that means that it represents a cash outflow. So we'll have a negative $800 in our cash. And uh, this will go against a rent expense. So negative $800 over there. And in our notes, we'll just identify rent expense. For the 3rd of May, purchased $500 of supplies on account. That means an influx of supplies, an increase on the supplies account. Because it's against an account, that indicates an increase of a liability. So we'll increase our accounts payable there. On the 9th of May, received $3,000 cash for services provided. So that's an influx of cash, $3,000 against a service revenue that is generated. And then on the 12th of May, we have declared and paid a $700 cash dividend. This will decrease our cash account and it will be noted against our dividend account. And on the 15th of May, uh, performed $3,300 of services on account. Now, because the service is already provided, our service revenue account will increase by $3,300. But because it is on account, it remains a receivable for us in our assets. Our accounts receivable will increase by $3,300. On the 17th of May, we paid $2,100 for employee salaries. And because we've already paid it, it'll decrease our cash and it'll be noted against our expenses and in our notes we'll identify salaries and wages expense on the 20th of may we have uh, paid for the supplies purchased on account on may 3rd now the supplies that we purchased on account if we come back to may 3rd over here they were for 500 dollars and now if we've paid for them that means that our liability is going to decrease by 500 dollars and against this, we're going to pay it, and that means our cash is going to decrease by $500. On the 23rd of May, um, received a cash payment of $2,000 for services provided on account 
on May 15th. So on May 15th, this work that we did on account, the $3,300, we've actually received some money from our employee, from our customers. We've in fact received $2,000. So our receivables will decrease by $2,000, but our cash will increase by $2,000. So you can see that there is an increase in cash and a decrease in cash happening simultaneously because of a certain transaction. On the 26th of May, um, 26th of May, borrowed $5,000 from the bank on a note payable. So specific liability, a note payable, $5,000 is increasing. And against this, the bank has basically just handed us cash. And so we get $5,000 influx into our business. On the 29th of May, we purchased office equipment for $2,300 on account. So our equipment account is going to increase by $2,300. And because it is bought on account, our liability account is going to increase by $2,300. On the 30th of May, we paid $150 for utilities. Because we've paid them, it'll represent a cash outflow for us. And it'll also represent an expense identification. We'll specify utilities expense here. And those are all of our transactions. So now that the effects of the transactions have come through, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we can calculate all the totals in our Excel. So we're going to go ahead and expand this real quick. And here we will calculate our totals for each column. Okay, and this is very, very important because it'll tell you the balance of each account at the end of these transactions. We're going to carry that throughout our entire chart. And let's just do a quick cross check and make sure that we are where we should be. And mm -mm, it appears we might have missed a little something here. First of May, 8,000, just one moment. There we go. Was there a series of counts here? No. Okay. Now, what we want to do is we want to make sure that not just individual uh, accounts total, but we also want to be able to sum up our total assets, total liabilities and equity to ensure that we have the correct balance on both sides. And so our cash accounts, receivable supplies and equipment basically sum up to our assets. We get 17,850 under our assets. And now let's take the sum of our liabilities and our equity. And because we have nothing from prior retained earnings, we can just take the sum of this. And you see our assets are equal to our liabilities plus equity. So the balance sheet equation is balancing in this particular case. Just a quick recheck over here. We need 17,800 in assets. We've got 17,850. And that means there's a 50 misplaced uh, somewhere along the way over here. Just give me one moment. Let's go ahead and check that out and see where that could be stemming from. Um, 8,000, 800, 500. Ah, we forgot to identify the fifth entry that is on May 5th. Yes, see, we don't have any entry for May 5th. My apologies. We're going to go ahead and insert that over here. So on the 5th of May, it specifies we paid $50 to advertise in the county news. So we paid $50, that's a decrease in cash, to advertise in the county news. So we've got an expense over here and specifically an advertising expense. And so now, again, both sides balance, but it's $17,800 and it is the correct balance. Okay, my apologies. All right, so now that our transactions are done, now we have to be able to create our balance sheet. Uh, I'm sorry, for part B, we have to create our income statement. For part C, we have to create our balance sheet. So remember to create our income statement. We basically want to be able to take our um, we want to be able to take our uh, revenues minus our expenses. So we'll do revenues. Um, in this particular case, the title of the account is service revenue. And our expenses, we're going to have a series of expenses. We're going to list them down one by one. So if we look at this column over here, we've got service revenue of 6300 we're going to put that in here, 6300 Our expenses, we're going to list them down one by one. If we look at our notes over here, we've got rent expense, advertising expense, salaries expense, and utilities expense. So we'll start off with rent expense of 800 Okay, so we'll put in rent expense of 800 
and then after rent expense we have advertising expense of 50 and then we have salaries and wages expense of 2100 2100 is by far our largest expense and lastly we've got a utilities expense of 150 and when we sum up all of these expenses we're just going to say total expenses and we just take the sum of our expenses over here uh, we've got 3100 and then if we try to calculate our net income remember if your revenue is greater than your expenses you're in profit and if your expenses are greater than your revenue then you're operating on a loss in this particular case we're going to take revenue minus our expenses and because revenue is greater than expenses, we're operating on a profit, and we've got a profit of 3,200. Now our income statement is done for part A, and remember part, sorry, for part B. Part C requires the balance sheet, but the missing piece between the two is the statement of changes, a statement of changes in retained earnings. So we wanna create that. Uh, by ourselves, okay, so that we've got all of our pieces together. And remember that the statement of changes in retained earnings is only a four-liner statement. So we start off with our retained earnings from the beginning of the time period, which in this case is a zero. Into this, we will add our net income, which we've already calculated from our income statement. It's 3,200. And from this, we will deduct our dividends paid which if we look at our statement over here the total of our dividends account is 700 so that's 700 and that will lead us to our retained earnings at the ending of that particular time period so that is zero plus 3200 and minus 700 and we are left with 2500 in our ending retained earnings now we want to move on to the balance sheet and remember the balance sheet is a snapshot of one point in time and on the one side we want to put all of our assets and on the other side we want to put our liabilities as well as our equity and it's called a balance sheet because both of these sides will need to balance so if we list our accounts you'll also see that over here we've already listed them by category right and especially in order of liquidity which is a requirement of the balance sheet so we'll have our cash we will have our accounts receivable we'll just put in the balances in a moment there uh, we're just listing the accounts for the moment supplies and then our equipment and those are all of our assets and then we'll do our total assets calculation over here then we've got our liabilities with our accounts payable and then we've got our notes payable and then our total liabilities and then in our equity we will have our common stock and then our retained earnings and then lastly we'll have our total equity and then to ensure that both sides balance we will make sure that we take our total liabilities and equity on this side just to see where we stand Okay, now going back to each one of these relevant balances. So let's go to our cash balance. Cash is 17,300, sorry, 13,700, 13,700. Accounts receivable is 1,300. Let's also correct our spelling mistake over here. This should be accounts receivable. And then our supplies is for 500. Our equipment is for 2,300. And then let's calculate the total of our assets. That's 17,800, that's the magic number we're looking for on the other side as well. For our accounts payable, our total is 2,300. For our notes payable, the number we're looking for is 5,000. And our total liabilities will be equal to 7,300. For our equity, our common stock is equal to 8,000. And our retained earnings, if you look back at your retained earnings statement over here, is 2,500. We're gonna go ahead and put that in there, 2,500. And so our total equity will be equal to 10,500. And our total liabilities and equity will be equal to the sum of 7,300 plus 
So here we don't need a sum. We don't need a plus sign because we've already put in the sum formula over there. Ten thousand five hundred. We get seventeen thousand eight hundred. And ladies and gentlemen, both sides equal. That means our accounting equation stands true. We've completed this particular question. Once again, don't forget to like and subscribe. Drop it in the comments below if you need any additional resources or help with any questions. Um, thank you very much. We'll see you for the next question.